Okay, this is the M1 paper for October 2021. It's question number five. This is a statics question. We've got equilibrium somewhere uh, written in the question. Here we go. Equilibrium written there. Uh, it's going to be resolving forces, etc., uh, etc. Et so let's have a read of it and get started. So we've got a small bead of mass 0.2 kilograms attached to the end of a rod. So this is the rod. This is the bead here. And it's threaded onto a fixed wire. So that's the wire that we've got there. Bead is held in equilibrium with rod PQ inclined as in the diagram. And then they do one of these things. They do this a lot where tan alpha equals four over three. That's the first thing I'm gonna attack in a minute. I'm gonna to wanna to know sine and cos. So I'll do that, get that out of the way. Then look at the rest of the question. It tells me the thrust in the rod it's going to be T newtons, and it tells me the bead is modelled as a particle. And it says, find the magnitude and direction of the friction force acting on the bead when T equals 2.5. So I'm not tempted to put all my forces on this diagram here. What I am going to do is to redraw that out. So I've already done that down here. But as I said to you, the first thing I'm going to do is just take care of this business, that if tan alpha is equal to four over three. Don't necessarily need to draw the diagram out because I'm explaining it to you guys. If tan alpha is four over three, we have that situation. I expect all my students to recognize that triangle there as the three, four, five triangle. You can do Pythagoras to work it out, but really you should just know that. So tan alpha is equal to four over three, then leads me to be able to work out what sine alpha and cos alpha are, and I know I'm going to need one or both of those in my question. So sine alpha here, opposite over hypotenuse, cos alpha here, adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so those two bits there, definitely going to be using as we go through the rest of this question. Right, now let's have a look at this diagram and put all my forces on. I always start off with my weights which is acting down there and would be 0.2 G. Um, if I've got a, a, a particle touching a surface, a wire is a surface here, then I never forget, this is the next one that I would always do, would be my reaction force. The reaction force is always perpendicular to the plane of the thing that it's sitting on. So I've got a reaction force there. They told me I had a tension or thrust, sorry, in the rod here. So if I've got this one, now this diagram's getting a bit um, full already, isn't it? I want to, in a minute, resolve those, horizontal and vertical, but let's just worry about our final force. It tells me it's a rough wire. So if it's a rough wire, there must be friction acting. And if anything, this rod is going to move downwards so if it moves downwards then the frictional force would be acting upwards at this moment in time so i've got that situation there isn't any acceleration because it's not actually moving it's all in equilibrium but that's where the particle would move if it was going to be moving right so once i've done my diagram um i now need to decide am i going to go horizontal and vertical or am i going to go parallel and perpendicular to this one well, if you think about it, look, all these forces are horizontal and vertical. So it absolutely makes sense then to take my T and to work it out as um, being horizontal and vertical components. Now, I could put them there, but it would get in the way of the um, 0.2G here. So I'm actually just going to draw them in there because this would still be alpha here. And now I can say, what's this one and what's this one going to be? The directions of those two are taken account of by the fact that this is going that way. So if it's going that way, it needs to go up and then across in that direction. Hopefully that makes sense to you um, from your revision. This one is going to be T cos alpha. This one is going to be T sine alpha. You would know, need to go back and do a lot of work if you're unable to resolve horizontal and vertical given that scenario there that we've got going on. 
So now that I've got all my forces on there done, remember T is going to be 2.5 in our actual question, but this is a general version. Um, so I suppose we could say that T equals 2.5 when I'm going to be going through and working this out. And so what I can do now is I can resolve horizontally and I can resolve vertically. If I'm going to do those things, just make a point of explaining what you're doing. So if I'm resolving horizontally, first of all, what have I got? I've simply got this force and this force. So they must be cancelling each other out. They must be equal to each other. So that's going to give me, <clears throat> excuse me, R equals T sine alpha. So R is equal to 2.5 and sine was 4 fifths. So R works out to be 2 newtons. And then if we resolve vertically, again, go back to my diagram now. What have I got? I've got F and T cos, they're both going up, and I've got the 0.2G going down. So resolving vertically, F plus T cos alpha is going to be equal to 0.2G. So F plus 2.5 times 3 fifths equals 0.2g and f then is equal to just take the um, 2.5 times 3 fifths over the other side actually works out to be 0.46 newtons and in the question Uh, it said find the, the magnitude and the direction of the frictional force. Okay, so it's going to be going upwards at 0.46 newtons. Okay, so that's part A done. Let's have a look at part B, which is a little bit more um, involved. Seven marks for this one. So it says the coefficient of friction between the bead and the wire is mu. If it's the greatest possible value of T being 6.125, then find the, um, the value of mu. So the reason I'm pausing there is because this, sorry, this just needs unpicking a little bit, okay? If we have T being the greatest possible value it can be, when we get T max there, it's still in equilibrium, so it's not going to move, but it's on the point of moving up. It would be on the point of moving up at that stage because it's at the maximum. So just stop and make sure that, that makes sense to you. This is hard, realizing that that bit there, that if they tell me it's the maximum value, then we've reached the point where it would start moving up if, if T got any bigger, okay? So um, in that case, that means it's going to be moving upwards, potential to be moving upwards, and that then has an impact on this thing. So the friction would now be going downwards. Now I need to explain that to the examiner. I didn't take too much detail, but I need to just explain it to the examiner and then things are gonna change when I'm doing that. So I'm gonna say, if T is a maximum, then particle is on the point of moving up. Moving up, you've seen that in other questions, hopefully. Uh, therefore, friction will now be downwards. And that sort of helps you, or might help you, with the direction of the first part, where I went through that quite quickly here. Right, so we've got to do exactly the same thing again now this time. So if I now resolve horizontally, I'm still going to get R equals T sine alpha. That's not going to be any different. So I'm going to get R equals 6.125 times 4 fifths. And whatever that works out to be, apparently 4.9 newtons. 
But now when I'm resolving upwards, and again, I'm not, I'm not gonna change my diagram. This was my diagram for the other one. But now friction's going down here. So I'm actually gonna get that these two are going to work out to be equal to the T cos. I don't think it's worth redrawing the diagram. I've got 90 minutes to do these tests. Um, so here, they do this sometimes where you, you've done the work originally. So I don't see any reason why we would need to redraw everything out just for a slight change here. I've made it clear there that I understand the adaptation to the question. So if I'm resolving vertically, then I'm just going to get the F and the 0.2G this time are equal to my T cos alpha. And then remember, we're going to have F equals mu R. So F is going to be mu times 4.9. So now that can go in here. So I'm going to get mu times 4.9 plus 0.2g is equal to 6.125 times by three fifths. And now mu is the only thing that I haven't got from this. So mu would work out to be 6.125 times three fifths minus the 0.2g all divided by 4.9. I'm doing that all in one go simply because I've run out of space and I've got the next question down there. So that works out, that mu works out to be 0.35. Do it to two significant figures. Make sure you're using exact values if somewhere through there you haven't just left it all in that uh, format. You don't need to leave it in that format. I'm just doing it like that so that you can see where all my values are coming from. But yeah, okay, interesting question that one, and hopefully it all makes sense to you.